from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2021 virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and ecosystem partners. Well, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon 2021 virtual. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We've got two great guests here. Always, always great to talk to the KubeCon co-chairs. And we have Stephen Augustus, head of open source at Cisco and also the KubeCon co-chair. Great to have you back. And Jasmine James, manager and engineering effectiveness at Twitter at KubeCon co-chair. She's new on the job, so we're not going to grill her too hard, but she's excited to share her perspective. Uh, Jasmine and Stephen, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So obviously the co-chairs, you guys see everything up front. Jasmine, you're going to learn that this is a really kind of key fun position because you, you've got a multiple, multiple hats you got to wear. You got to put a great program together. You got to entertain and surprise and delight the attendees and also you know, get the right trends, pick everything right. And, and, you know, and then kind of keep that harmonious vibe going that CNCF and KubeCon has had. So, so it's a hard job. So I got to ask you right out of the gate, what are the top trends that you guys have selected and are pushing forward this year that we're seeing evolve and unfold here at KubeCon. For sure, yeah. So um, I'm excited to see, uh, and I would say that some of the top trends for cloud native right now are just uh, changes in the ecosystem, how we how we think about different use cases for cloud native technology. Um, so you'll see lots of uh, lots of talk about. Um, new architectures being introduced into cloud native uh, technologies or uh, things like uh, WebAssembly, WebAssembly WASM use cases, um, and really starting to, and, and again, I, I think I, yeah, I mentioned this every time, but like what are the customer use cases? Actually really thinking about how all of these, these building blocks connect um, and create a cohesive story. Um, so I think you know a lot of it is 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 enduring, um, and and will always be uh, you know part. Um, my my favorite thing to see is is pretty much always uh, maintainer and and end user stories. Um, but yeah, but uh, architectures uh, architectures uh, wasm and uh, uh, security security is a huge focus, um, and and uh, and it's nice to see it come to the forefront um, as we talk about. Um, you know, having these like the security day, as well as um, all of the the talk around supply chain security, which has been a really, really, really uh, big uh, event, I will say. Yeah. <laughs> well, great job from last year. We were virtual again, but you know, we're back in real. The real world's coming back in the fall, so you know, hopefully, in North America, we'll be Yay. in person. Jasmine, you're new to the job. Tell us about. Tell us a little bit about you. Introduce yourself to the to the community and tell more about who you are, and then and why you're so excited sure. to be the, the co-chair with uh, Stephen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm um, Jasmine James. Um, I've been in the industry for the past five or six years, um, previously at Delta Airlines, now at Twitter. Um, as a part of my job at Delta, we did a huge drive on adopting um, Kubernetes. So a lot of those experiences, um, I was very, very blessed to be a part of um, in making the adoption and really the cultural shift um, easy for developers um, during my time there. Um, I'm really excited to experience like cloud native from the co-chair perspective because historically I've been like on the consumer side, going to talks, taking all of those best practices, still everything I could and to bring it back into my job so make um, everyone's lives easier. So it's really, really great to see all of the fantastic ideas that are being presented, all of the growth and maturity um, within the cloud native um, world. Um, similar to Steven, I'm super excited to hear about the security stuff, um, especially as it relates to making it easy for developers to shift left on security versus it being such an afterthought and making it something that you don't really have to think about. Um, developer experience is huge for me, um, which is why I took the job at Twitter six months ago. So I'm really excited to see um, what I can learn um, from the other co-chairs and yeah. to bring it back to my day to day. Yeah, Twitter has been very active in open source and everyone knows that and it's a great job to see you land there. You know, one of the interesting trends is this year, obviously besides security is GitOps, but the one that I think is relevant to your background so fresh is the end user contributions and involvement has been really exploding on the scene. It's always been there. We've covered, you know, Envoy with Lyft, 
but and now enterprises, now mainstream enterprises have been kind of going to the open source well and bringing those goodies back to their camps and building out and bringing it back. So you're starting to see that flywheel developing. You've been on that side now here. Talk about that dynamic and how real that is and, and important and share some perspective of what's really going on around this explosion around more end user contribution, more end user involvement. Absolutely. So I really think that a lot of industry like players are starting to see the importance of contributing back to open source because historically we've done a lot of taking, you know, utilizing these different components to drive um, the business logic and not really making an investment in the product itself. So it's really, really great to see large companies invest in open source, even have whole teams dedicated to open source and how it's consumed internally. Um, so I really think it's going to be a big win um, for the companies and for the open source community, because I really am a big believer in like giving back and making sure that you should give back as much as you're taking. And by making it easy for companies to do the right thing and then even highlighting it, you know, as a part of CNCF projects, it'll be a really, really great, um, just a drive forward, a great environment for everyone. So That's really, really excited to see that. Jasmine, awesome stuff, great, great insight. Steven, I want to just have you piggyback off that and, and, and comment on companies, enterprises that want to get more involved with the cloud native community from their respective experiences. You know, what's the playbook? Uh, is there new on-ramps? Is there new things? Um, is there a best practice? What's your view? I mean, obviously everyone's growing and changing. Look at IT has changed. I mean, IT is evolving completely to cloud ops, SRE, GitOps, day two operations. It's pretty much standard now, uh, but they need to ch learn and change. What's your take on this? Uh, yeah, so I mean, I think I think to, to Jasmine's point, and I, I'm not sure how much we've discussed my background in the past, but I actually uh, I actually came from the corporate IT background, did desktop S or you know desktop help desk support, all of that stuff up into operations, DevOps, SRE, production engineering. Um, I was an SRE at a startup uh, who used who used CoreOS technologies and started using uh, Kubernetes uh, back when Kubernetes was at one two, I think, <laughs> and uh, that was my first journey into cloud native and. I became CoreOS's like only, uh, you know, only customer to employee convert, right? Um, so I'm I'm very much big on that end user story and figuring out how to get people involved because that was my story as well. Um, so I think that uh, you know some of the work that we do or a lot of the work that we do in um, in contributor strategy, uh, the SIG uh, CNCF SIG contributor strategy is all around thinking through. Uh, Thinking through how to bring on new contributors to these uh, to these the, the various cloud native projects, right? So we've had we've had chats with Container, you know, Container D and Linkerd and 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 a bunch of other folks across the ecosystem, as well as the the kind of the, the maintainer circle sessions that we hold, which are kind of like uh, they're private, uh, you know, not recorded, so maintainers can kind of get raw and talk about what they're yeah. they're feeling, whether it be around uh, whether it be around bolstering contributions or whether it be like managing burnout, right? Or thinking about how you uh, talk through the, the, the values and the principles um, for your projects. So I think that, you know, part of that story is building, uh, is, is building for multiple use cases, right? Um, you take Kubernetes, for example, right? So uh, emeritus, uh, emeritus chair for SIG PM over in Kubernetes. Um, one of the uh, sub project owners for the enhancements sub project, um, which in involves basically like figuring out how we intake new enhancements to the um, to the community, but uh, as well as like what the end user cases are, all of the use cases for that, right? How we make it how we make it easy to use the technology and how we make it um, more effective uh, for people to have conversations about how they use technology, right? So yeah. I think it's kind of a con continuing story um, and, and it's and it's delightful to see all of the people getting involved in uh, SIG contributor strategy um, because it means that they care about all of the, the, the folks that are coming into their projects and making it a uh, making it a more welcoming and, and easier to contribute place. So. Yeah, that's great stuff. And one of the things you mentioned about IT and your background and, and the scale change from IT and just the operational change over is interesting. I was just talking with a friend and we were talking about you know GitOps um, and you know SREs and how you know in colleges is it an engineering track or is it computer science and it's kind of a hybrid right so you're seeing essentially this new operational model at scale that's cloud ops 
So you got hybrid, you got on-premise, you got cloud native, and now soon to be multi-cloud. So new things come into play, architecture, coding, in programmability, all these things are like projects now in CNCF and there's a lot of vendors and contributors. But as a company, the IT function's changing fast. So that's going to require uh, more training and more involvement, and yet open source is filling the void if you look at some of the successes out there. It's interesting, can you comment on the companies that are out there saying, hey, I know I, my IT department's going to be turning into essentially SRE <laughs> operations or you know, cloud ops at scale. How do they get there? What, how, could, how, do those, how could they work with KubeCon and what's the key playbook? What, how would you answer that? Yeah, so I, I would say, you know, first off, the, the, the place to go is the 101 track. Um, we specifically craft that 101 track to make sure that um, people who are new to uh, cloud native get a, a very cohesive story around what they're, what they're trying to get into, right? At any one time. Um, so, so head to the 101 track, please head to the 101 track, hang out, check out the, definitely check out all of the keynotes that, again, the keynotes, we, we put a lot of work into making sure these keynotes tell a, a very nice story about all of the technology and, um, the, the, the amount of work that the amount of work that our presenters put into it as well is, is phenomenal. It's, it's just, it's, it's top notch. It's top notch every time. Um, so those are, those will always be my suggestions actually go to the keynotes and, and definitely check out the uh, the 101 track. Awesome, Jasmine, I got to get your take on this now that you're on the KubeCon and you're co-chairing with Steven. Um, what's your, what's your um, uh, story to the folks that are in the end user side out there that were in your mm -hmm. old position that you, know, you were at Delta doing some great Kubernetes work, but now it's going beyond Kubernetes. I was just talking with another uh, participant in the ecosystem, KubeCon ecosystem saying, it's not just Kubernetes anymore. There's other systems that we're going to deploy our real time metrics yeah. on and, and whatnot. So what's the story? What's yep. the update? What, what do you see in the inside now, now that you're on board <laughs> right? yeah. and you're at a hyperscaler Twitter? <laughs> What's the, what's your, what's your advice? What's your commentary to your old friends in the end user world? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, you know, it's not an easy task. Um, I think that what you had mentioned about starting with the one-on-one -on -one is like super key. Like that's where you should start. There's so many great stories out there in previous cube cons that have been told. Like I was listening to those stories. And the great thing about our community is that it's authentic, right? We're telling like all of the ways we tripped up so we can prevent you from doing the same thing and having an easier path, which is really awesome. Um, another thing I would say is uh, do not underestimate the cultural shift, right? There's so many tools and technologies out there, but there's also a cultural transformation that has to happen. You're shifting from, you know, traditional IT roles to a really holistic, like so many different things are changing about the way um, infrastructure was interacted with, the way developers are developing. So don't underestimate to make the cultural shift and make sure you're bringing everyone to the party because there's a lot of perspectives from the operations side, from the development side that need to be considered before you make this shift initially. Um, so that way you can make sure you're approaching the problem in the right way. So that, those would be my recommendations. Uh, so speaking of cultural shift, Stephen, I know this is a big passion of yours is diversity in the ecosystem. I think with COVID we've seen probably in the past two years, a major cultural shift on the personnel involved, the people, uh, participating, still a lot more work to get done. Where are we on diversity and the ecosystem? Uh, how would you rate the progress uh, and the overall achievements? Uh, I would say doing better, but never stop. Um, the what has happened in, in COVID, I think you know, if you if you look across uh, if you look across companies, if you look across the the opportunities that have opened up for people in general, um, there have been there have been plenty of doors that have shut. Right, um, and and doors that have really made the assumption that you need to be physical uh, or in person to to do good work, um, and I think that I think that the cloud native ecosystem, um, the work that the LF and CNTF do, uh, and and really the way that we interact in projects um, has has kind of pushed towards this 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 async first. This this remote first uh, 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 work culture, right? So you see it in these large corporations that have had to, you know, change the travel policies because of COVID, and uh, you know, and 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 really, you know, for for someone who's 
who's coming off of being like a field engineer and solutions architect, right? The bread and butter is hopping on and off of, of a plane, you know, shaking hands, going going yeah. to dinner, you know, doing the 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 the, uh, the song and dance, right, with uh, with customers, and uh, for that that model to to functionally shift, right. Um, having conversations in different ways, right? And 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 yeah, sometimes it's sometimes it's uh, a lot of a lot of Zoom calls, right? Zoom calls, webinars, all all of these things. But um, I think some of what has happened is, you know, you take the the release team, for example, the Kubernetes release team. This was our first uh, this is our first uh, cycle with a uh, Navarun uh, Navarun, who's our our one twenty one release team lead. Uh, is based in in India, right? And that's the first time that we've had uh, APAC region um, uh, APAC region release team lead. And the and what that forced us to do, we were already working on it. But what that forced us to do was is really focus on asynchronous communication. How can we get things done without having to have people in the room? And and we were like, with Navarun here, it either works or it doesn't. Like we're either going to prove that what we've put in place works for asynchronous communication or it doesn't. And, and you know, given that, given that a project of, of this scale can operate uh, just fine, right? <laughs> right, Just fine delivering a release um, with people all across the globe. It proves that we have a lot of flexibility in the way that we offer opportunities, um, both on the open source side as well as, as on the company side. Yeah, and uh, I got to say, KubeCon has always been global from day one. I was in Shanghai and I was in um, uh, Hangzhou visiting Alibaba and who do I see in the lobby, the CNCF crew, and I'm like, what are you guys doing here? Oh, we're here talking cloud with Alibaba. So global is huge. You guys have nailed that, so congratulations and keep that going. Jasmine, uh, your, your perspective as women in tech, I mean, you're seeing more and more focus and some, some great doors opening. It's still not enough. We've been covering this for a long time. Still the numbers are down. But I had a great conference recently at Stanford Women in Data Science, amazing conference. A lot of power players coming in. Women in tech is evolving. What's your take on this? Still a lot more work to done. You're an, you're an inspiration. Share your story. Yeah, um, you know, it's we have a long way to go. Um, there's no question about it. I do think that there's a lot of great organizations, CNCF being one of them, really doing a great job at sharing um, networking opportunities, encouraging um, other women to contribute to open source and letting that be sort of the gateway into um, a tech career. Um, I, you know, my journey is, you know, starting as a systems engineer at Delta, um, working my way into leadership um, somehow. I'm not sure I ended up there, um, but, you know, really sort of shifting and being able to lift, you know, other uh, women up has been like such a, so fortunate to be able to do that. Um, women who code, um, being a mentor, things of that nature has been a great opportunity, but I do feel like the open source community has a long way to go um, to be a more welcoming place for women contributors. Um, things like code of conduct, you know, that being very prevalent, making sure that it's not daunting and scary, you know, going into GitHub and starting to, you know, create a PR for, out of fear of what someone might say about your contributions instead of it being sort of an educational experience. So um, I think there's a lot of opportunities, but um, there's a lot of programs, networking opportunities out there, especially everyone being remote now um, that have presented themselves. So I'm, I'm very hopeful. Um, and the CNCF, like I said, is doing a great job at, at highlighting these women contributors um, that are making changes to uh, CNCF projects um, and, and really making it something that is celebrated, which yeah. is really great. You know what I love, Stephen, we talked to this last time and I, the Clubhouse app has, has come online since we were last talking and you know, I know it's, it's all audio. So, you know, there's a lot of ideas and you know, you're, it's, all, it's all open. Um, so with asynchronous first, you have more access but still context matters. So the, the language, so there's, there's still more opportunities potentially to offend and or get it right. So this is now becoming a new cultural shift. You, you brought this up last time we chatted around language. Language is important. So I think this is something that uh, we're keeping an eye on and trying to keep you know, open dialogue around, hey, it matters what you say asynchronously or text. We all know we all know that text moment where someone said, well, I didn't really mean that, but it was offensive or. It's like, but you said it. But you, but <laughs> you said, said it's there. there. <laughs> it's like, there it is. <laughs> I talk, share, you, you, you're passionate about this area. This is super important, how we work. Yeah, so I, you know, I, you mentioned Clubhouse and it's something that I, I don't like. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, 
no no offense to anyone who is behind creating new technology for sure um but i think that clubhouse from uh, you know if you take platforms like that let's you know let's generalize um you take platforms like that and you think about the um the unintentional exclusion that those platforms involve right um you you if you think about uh folks with disabilities who are not necessarily able to hear a conversation right or um or you, you don't provide opportunities to like caption your conversations right that that either uh, intentionally or unintentionally excludes a group of, of folks, right? So I've seen I've seen cloud native, um, you know, I've seen cloud native things happen on uh, Clubhouse, on uh, Twitter Spaces. I won't personally be involved in them um, until I know that it's a platform that is uh, not exclusive. Uh, so I think that it's great that we're having um, new opportunities to engage with folks that are not necessarily, um, you know, you've got people who prefer the the, the Slack and Discord vibe, you, you know, you've got people who prefer the, the 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 text over phone calls, so to speak, thing, right? You've got people who prefer phone calls, so maybe like you know, maybe Clubhouse, Twitter Spaces, insert new. I guess Discord is doing a thing too. Um, they call it stages. Discord has stages, which is stages. They Clubhouse. have stages. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in, insert, uh, you know, Clubhouse clone here, yeah. and uh, cube, yeah, and that's Cube House. We got a Cube House. Come on in. Cube yeah. House. Cube yeah. House. Uh, it's trivial. Uh, Bill, so you've got actually. a great, you know, great ways to engage uh, there for people who, um, you know, prefer that 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 type of engagement, um, and 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 something that is explicitly different from the uh, I'm on a Zoom call all day kind of kind of vibe. Um, enjoy yourselves. Enjoy yourselves. Try to make it as engaging as possible. Yeah. Um, just realize, just realize uh, what you may unintentionally be doing um, by creating a community that not all, everyone can be a part of. Yeah, unintentional um, consequences. I mean, this is key. Language matters to how you get involved, your, how, what, how you support it. I mean, the accessibility piece, I never thought about that if you if you can't listen. I mean, you can't, there's no content there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that is, you know, that is a, a huge, you know, that's a huge part of the, the cloud native community, right? Thinking through uh, accessibility, internationalization, localization, uh, to make sure that our con contributions are actually um, accessible, right? Uh, to, to folks who want to get involved and not just, um, not just prioritizing, uh, let's say the, the US, uh, you know, the, the, the US or, or English speaking part of the world, so. Awesome. Jasmine, what's your take? What, what can we do better in the world to make the diversity and inclusion uh, not a conversation? Because when it's not a conversation, then it's solved. I mean, ultimately it's got a lot more work to do, as, but you can't be exclusive. You got to be diverse. More, more output happens. What's your, what's, your, what's your take on this? Yeah, I, I feel like it'll there'll always be work to do in this space because there's so many groups of people, right, that we have to take an account for. Um, I, I think that thinking through inclusion in the onset um, of, you know, whatever you're doing um, is the best way to get ahead of it. Um, there's so many different components of it and you want to make sure that you're um, ma making a space for everyone. Um, I also think that making sure that, you know, you have a pipeline of, you know, you know, a network of people that represent, you know, a good, you know, subset of the world is going to be very key for shaping any program or any sort of project that anyone does in the future. But I do think it's something that we have to consistently keep at the forefront of our mind, always consider. Um, it's great that it's in so many conversations right now. Um, it really makes me happy, especially being a mom of an eight-year-old girl who's into computer science as well, um, that there'll be better opportunities um, and hopefully, you know, more prevalent opportunities and representation um, for her by the time she grows up. So really, really great. Get her coding early, as I always say. Jasmine, great to have you on, Steven, as well. Uh, good to see you. Final question. Um, what do you hope people walk away with this year from KubeCon? What's the, what's the final kind of objective? Jasmine, we'll start with you. Wow, final objective. Um, I think that I would want people to walk away um, with a sense of community. Um, I feel like the Cube C and CF world is a great place to get knowledge, but also an established sense of community, not stopping at just the conference and taking part of the community, giving back, contributing um, would be a great thing for people to walk away with. 
Awesome, Stephen. I'm I'm all about community as well. Uh, <laughs> so I think that you know one of the one of the fun things that we've been doing is uh, um, is just engaging in different ways um, than we than we have normally uh, across the kind of the KubeCon boundaries, right? So you take you take CNCF Twitch, you take some of the things that are that I can't mention yet, but are, are coming out. You should see around uh, and, and post KubeCon week. Um, the way that we're engaging with people is changing, and 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 it's needed to change uh, because of because of how you know the world is right now. Um, so I hope that I hope that uh, you know to to reinforce the the community point. Um, my favorite part of any conference is the hallway track, and I think I, I mentioned this last time. Um, and we're, we're trying our best. We're trying our best to create it. I, we've had lots of great feedback um, about, you know, whether it be people playing among us on, on CNCF Twitch or, you know, hanging out on Slack till the early hours, um, you know, just chatting it up and, and the, you know, our kind of like uh, crafted hallway track. So I, I think that um, engage, engage, don't be afraid to, to say hello. Um, I know that it's new and scary uh, sometimes, uh, and trust me, we've all, we've literally all been here. It's going to be okay. Come in, have have some fun. Uh, we're we're all pretty friendly. We're all pretty friendly, and we know and understand that um, the only way to to make this community uh, survive and thrive. Is to is to bring on new contributors, is to get new perspectives, and and continue building awesome technology. So so don't be afraid. I love it. You guys have a global, diverse, and knowledgeable and open community. Congratulations, Jasmine James, Stephen Augusta, co-chairs for KubeCon here on the Cube, breaking it down. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.